Warning, this is how I personally complete each project. I do have some mechanical and electrical knowledge. Use this video at your own risk. I am not and will not be responsible for any damage that may occur while you attempt to repeat as I do. Always follow all manufacturer warnings and instructions. Consult a professional if you are unsure. Daddy g -Ville's World. What's up, everyone? Today, I'll be showing you how to replace the rear shocks on a 2008 Dodge Grand Caravan or the Chrysler Town & Country. I'll be using a half-inch drive extendable breaker bar with an 18 millimeter deep well socket, a three-inch drive ratchet with an 18 millimeter deep well socket, an 18 millimeter long wrench, and a four inch three eighths extension. Now I lifted the van and put it evenly on jack stands. I'm replacing both sides, but only filming one. Now, here's the passenger side rear shock bottom. Here's the bolt head, here's the nut. Now on the top of the shock, the bolt head is here and the nut is behind the shock mount bracket, as you can see here. Now I've seen a lot of people say they can't get the nut off even with a shorty wrench. So they removed these four bolts which removes the whole bracket along with the shock. But that's just too much work for me, giving me six bolts instead of just two. So I took a minute and dug out all the dirt, rust, and debris with my fingers. Then I had no issues getting the boxed-in wrench on them. Now I get started by spraying the bolts and nuts with some PB Blaster, letting it sit. Now you don't have to, but you can remove the tires on each side to get easier access to the top shock bolts. Now, I'm going to break the top loose, but I'm going to leave it in until I get the bottom ready to pull out. Now, to break the bottom loose and remove the nut. Now the bottom is done, to where I can just pull the bolt out. I move back to the top. You can see that I've already got my wrench on the nut. Now to fully remove them both. Then reach under and remove the bottom bolt. If the shock is stuck in place and you can't get it out, then give it a few hits and knock it out of place. Now before I install the shock, I can press it. Some people call it priming it. I compressed it twice off camera, then once before I put the bolt in the top. Now with the bolt in the top, you can see the bottom bolt hole doesn't line up. So get the bolt in your hand and compress the shock. Put it in place. While it decompresses, put the bolt in, making sure it goes all the way through. Put the nut back on and tighten it down. If you have a torque wrench, now I forgot to film it, but the torque spec is 55 pounds. Without setting up lights, filming angles, and waiting on PB Blaster, it took me 20 minutes total to remove and replace the shock. Now, the driver's side. That's another story. The shock was busted, the top bolt and nut came out with ease. Now for the bottom, the nut came off easy, but the bolt was seized together with the inner metal bushing of the shock. I used an impact, Knocking it out with multiple tools, punches, and hammers, the bolt would not budge. Called the owner, told them what I did, and what I have to do as in I'm cutting the bolt out. I called all the auto parts stores in my area looking for a replacement bolt. They all told me they didn't have them in stock and can't order them. So I got another grade 8 bolt and nut the safe size diameter. Put the shock in, called it a day. Now I did find them online from like eBay and other sites. But the cheapest place I found the bolt was... DodgeParts.com Daddy G Bill's World